Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello. Good evening, teacher. Hi. Okay, let's begin. Ah, there's a lot to do today. So everybody, welcome. Uh, let me adjust the pen. Okay, that's better. Okay, um, let's begin. I'm just, uh, I'm going to call your names from the attendance, li attendance list. So when you hear your name, please let me know. All right, let's begin. Just a second, it's loading, screen's loading. <clears throat> All right, let's do this. Okay. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Present teacher. Welcome. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. I see he's connected. Uh, Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Damaris Merari Marroquín Rivas. Present teacher. Welcome. Um, Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Present teacher. Welcome. Elisa Arelí López Campos. Present teacher. Welcome. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. Thank you. Welcome. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Juan, Ed Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Present teacher. Welcome. A uh, Madeline Diana Serón de Paz. Present. Welcome. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Present. Welcome. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present. Welcome. Sandra Janet Vázquez Cortés. I'm here. Welcome. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar, Saúl Ar Crespín, perdón. Sí, Saúl, ya. Yeah. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. ¿Es it Mengíbar Crespín o Crespín Orellana? I have two chat entries here. Okay. Uh, Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Present. Welcome. Okay. Uh, Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Present. Welcome. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Uh, Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Welcome. Okay, I'm going to uh, call your names from the attendance list again uh, by the end of the class. So right now we need to start. So 
everybody take a look at this it's uh, advanced english one once again and uh, that's me van Duñang, at your service and this is session number 10 and today is september the 12th of 2023 or 2023 whichever you prefer so what are we going to do today if you remember yesterday we studied uh, relative clauses. We had an introduction on relative clauses. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a very short review on relative clauses. And we're going to mention again the difference between defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses. Okay. Madeline. Well, um, I, oh my gosh. Would you, would you help me about that? Sure. First exercise on platform, the section three, please. Uh, the platform section three. Okay, we're going to do that today, actually. Okay, so okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to do it together. Don't worry. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So um, let's have a review on this. Non-defining relative clauses. Okay, so well, we're going to take a look at the, fine, at the defining ones and the non-defining ones. So again, uh, we studied this yesterday. It was the last thing we covered and we're going to have a, good, uh, a very quick review. So there are two types of relative clause. Type one is the defining relative clause. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, just zoom in a little bit right there. So you have the lady who lives next door is a doctor. The second one is Grace Works uh, for a company that makes furniture. And we stayed at the hotel at the hotel that you recommended. Now you have the relative clauses here who lives next door that makes furniture and that you recommended. Now in these examples, the relative clause tells you exactly which person or thing or what kind of person or thing the speaker means. If you omit the relative clauses from the sentences, um, they are grammatically correct, but uh, they don't make sense, okay, to the listener. Because if I just say, imagine the lady is a doctor, you will ask me, what lady? Who are you talking about? But then I say the lady who lives next door, you say like, ah, oh, okay, now I understand, okay? If I say Grace works for a company, you will say like, okay, fine, I also work for a company, right? So what's special about that? But if I say Grace works for a company that makes furniture, that makes a difference, okay? Because now I am specifying what kind of company Grace works for. And the last one, if, if I tell you, we stayed at the hotel, you will tell me what hotel, okay? And I say, we stayed at the hotel that you recommended. So when I say that you recommended, I am specifying what hotel I'm talking about. Without it, the sentence is still grammatically correct, <clears throat> but it doesn't make much sense to the listener because they, they, they will feel confused, okay? Because there is not enough information for you to understand the whole idea. Now, again, right? In these sentences, the relative clause uh, clauses tell you which person or thing or what kind of person or thing the speaker means. When I say the lady who lives next door, I'm, I'm telling you uh, which lady. If I say a company that makes furniture, I'm telling you the kind of company it is. And the hotel that you recommended, when I say that, I'm telling you which hotel. Now, when you have defining relative clauses, those are defining relative clauses, you never use commas, okay? So there is like the main part of the sentence and then there's the, de the defining relative clause. You will never use commas to separate the two parts of the sentence, never, okay? Always remember, if you have a defining relative clause, don't use commas, okay? That's very, very important. Now, what happens right here? This is type two, non-defining relative clauses. What are those? Take a look at the examples. James, who lives in London, is an architect. Anna told me about her new job, which she's enjoying a lot. And we stayed at the Park Hotel, which a friend of ours recommended. Now, what happens here? In these examples, the relative clauses do not tell you which person or thing the speaker means. We already know which thing or person is meant. James, we know James. Let's let's imagine that James is a friend of uh, a friend of ours, a friend that uh, in common. So uh, Anna's new job. Okay, you know Anna, and you know that Anna has a new job, and the Park Hotel. You know the Park Hotel. So if I say, for example, James is an architect, and I know James, and you you know James. Okay, uh, the sentence makes sense. You have enough information to understand everything. Now, if I say James, who lives in London, okay, is an architect. When I say who lives in London, this is uh, non-essential information. This is extra information, okay, that I'm giving you. 
So Anna told me about her new job. If I just tell you that, the sentence is complete, it's grammatically correct, and there is enough information for you to understand. You will not get confused. But then I say, Anna told me about her new job, which she's enjoying a lot, okay? That is extra information that I'm giving you. If I take it out of the sentence, the sentence still makes sense. And the last one, we stayed at the Park Hotel. Again, if I leave it at that, and I only say, we stayed at the Park Hotel, we have a complete sentence. And the meaning is also complete. You will not ask me, what hotel? No, I'm just telling you, right? I'm telling you right now that we stayed at the Park Hotel. And then I say, which a friend of ours recommended. Now, that piece of information is not essential for you to understand what I'm talking about. It's only extra information. So the relative clauses in these sentences give us extra information about the person or thing. These relative clauses are called non-defining relative clauses, non-defining relative clauses, okay? And when you have a non-defining relative clause, you will always use a, a commas to separate them from the main part of the sentence. Examples, James, comma, who lives in London, comma, is an architect. Anna told me about her new job, comma, which she's enjoying a lot. We stayed at the Park Hotel, comma, which a friend of ours recommended. Okay? Before we continue, do you have any questions about this? Do you understand the main idea behind uh, the difference between uh, defining and non-defining relative clauses? Any questions? Um, okay. <laughs> Hello. Well, we'll continue then. Non-defining relative clauses. Now, take a look at this. In both types of relative clause, you can use who for people and which for things. But be very careful here. Pay close attention to what I'm about to say. Okay. Type number one, defining relative clauses. You can use that. The relative pronoun that is permitted. You can use it. Examples. Do you know anyone who speaks French and Italian? Or you can say, do you know anyone that speaks French and Italian? Similarly, you can say, Grace works for a company which makes furniture, or Grace, for, Grace works for a company that makes furniture. So you can use that, okay, for people and things, when you have a defining relative clause. But Look at this. When you have a non-defining relative clause, you can't use that. You can only use who or which, but not that. Example, John, comma, who speaks French and Italian, comma, works as a tour guide. Now, who speaks French and Italian is a non-defining relative clause because it's giving you extra information about John. You don't need this information to understand the sentence. I can tell you, John works as a tour guide. Oh, ah, okay. I didn't know that. So John works as a tour guide. So when I say who speaks French and Italian, this is extra information. Now, because it is extra information, it is a non-defining relative clause. You divide it from the main part of the sentence by using commas. And also, also, be very careful here, you can't use that. If you say, John, that speaks French and Italian, works as a tour guide, that will be incorrect. Okay, so don't use it like that. Remember, in a non-defining relative clause, you cannot use that. You will have to use who or which, but never that. Second example, Anna told me about her new job, which she is enjoying a lot. Again, which she is enjoying a lot is extra information about the job. It's not essential information, therefore, it's a non-defining relative clause, and you separate it from the main part of the sentence by using a comma. Okay, we know this. Uh, but take a look at the relative pronoun. It's which. You can use which. That's good. Okay, but you cannot use that. You say, if you say, Anna told me about her new job that she's enjoying a lot, that will be incorrect. So don't use that in a non-defining relative clause. So again, 
If it's a defining relative clause, you can use that. No problem. Use that. There is no problem. But if it is non-defining, no. You can't use that. You will have to use who for people, which for things. All right? Now, in both types of relative clause, you can use whose, where, and when. Okay, in this case, it doesn't really matter if it is a defining relative clause or a non-defining relative clause. You can use whose, where, or when. There is no restriction right there. Let's take a look at some examples uh, when we're, uh, when, uh, of uh, sentences containing defining relative clauses with whose, where, and when. We helped some people whose car had broken down. Ayudamos a unas personas cuyo carro se había arruinado. Okay, so we helped some people whose car had broken down. That's defining. If I only say we helped some people, it's so like, okay, but how? How did you, who, who are you talking about? And how did you help them? So we helped some people whose car had broken down. Okay, now that's a more complete idea. Uh, next, what's the name of the place where you went on vacation? Okay, if I just tell you, what's the name of the place? You will ask me. What place? What are you talking about? But if I tell you what's the name of the place where you went on vacation, then you will say, ah, that place. You say, uh, uh, I don't know, the Sunshine Hotel, to give you an idea. So summer is the season when I'm happiest, OK? So all of these are defined in relative clauses. You can use whose, where, and when. And also, you can use whose, where, and when in non-defined in relative clauses. No problem. There is no restriction. Lisa comma, whose car had broken down, comma, was in a very bad mood. She was angry, okay? So again, if you eliminate the relative clause, the sentence still makes sense. And I say, Lisa was in a very bad mood. You will understand what I mean. Kate has just been to Sweden, okay? That's a complete idea. Now, if I add extra information, that will have to be a non-defined relative clause where her daughter lives. So Kate has, has, has just been to Sweden where her daughter lives. And the last one, the restaurants here stay open until midnight when many locals are still enjoying dinner. So again, you can use whose, where, and when in both defining and non-defining relative clause. Basically, the only restriction is that. Remember, if it's a non-defining relative clause, don't use that. If it is defining, yes, you can use it. Um, any questions before we continue? I'm going to share this with you via WhatsApp. Do you have any questions? Yes, teacher. No, teacher. It's clear, teacher. OK. Clear. <laughs> Thank you very much. OK. All right. So um, your turn. OK, now you will show me if, if, if this is clear, if this really is clear. So now this exercise can be a bit challenging. So um, uh, be careful when you do it. OK, your turn. Take a look. Make one sentence from two. Use the information in parentheses to make a non-defining relative clause. Remember, non-defining. You will need to use who, whose, which, where, when. There's an example. Catherine is very friendly. In parentheses, you have, she lives next door to us. So Catherine, comma, who lives next door to us, comma, is very friendly. Okay? Now we have number two. Number two is, we stayed at the Park Hotel. In parentheses, you have, a friend of ours recommended this hotel. So what can you say? If you know the answer, you can raise your hand and participate. Any idea? We stayed at the Park Hotel. A friend of ours recommended this hotel. Gabriel. I have an idea, I an, an idea but I don't know if it is the right answer. But Only one way to find out. And uh, we stay at the Park Hotel, who a friend of ours recommended. We're, you're talking about the Park Hotel, not a person. Therefore, you cannot use who. Which a mm -hmm. friend of ours recommended. Exactly. Okay, so we stayed at the Park Hotel, which a friend of ours recommended. 
Okay, yeah, that's right. So we stayed at the Park Hotel, which a friend of ours recommended. Thank you, Gabriel. Number three, we drove to the airport, and then you have the airport was not far from the city. So what can you say here? If you want to participate, please raise your hand. We have a chat entry here. Madeline says, when do you use whose? Okay, no problem. Um, I'm going to go back a few slides because uh, Madeline uh, has a question here. So where is whose? Let me see. Ah, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Just a moment. Okay, here. Whose? Okay, uh, answering uh, Madeline's question. Whose refers to a person's belongings. He, he's a musician whose albums have sold millions. Whose? This is like when you say in Spanish, cuyo, cuya, cuyos, o cuyas. Okay, cuyos álbumes se han vendido por millones. So, han vendido más de un millón de copias. So, he's a musician whose albums have sold millions. Okay? That's how you use whose. Now, um, something else to say about whose is that it's always accompanied by a noun. Okay? So, uh, you use it like this. Whose plus, uh, um, plus a noun. You can say whose car, whose uh, house, whose, um, I don't know, something else, right? So whose who's, uh, things, <laughs> whose uh, uh, motorcycle, etc. Okay, that's the idea. Whose is always followed by a noun. Okay, so that should give you an idea on how to use it. All right, so uh, getting back to where we went. Just a moment ago, okay, here. All right, okay, so we drove to the airport. The airport was not far from the city. Who wants to try? Don't be afraid. If you don't get the right answer, worst case scenario, we're going to help you get the right answer, okay? And and we're going to help together. We're going to, uh, sorry, learn together. Madeline says, thanks. You're welcome, Madeline. My pleasure. Okay. Um, so who wants to who wants to try number three? We drove to the airport. The airport was not far from the uh, uh, far from the city. I'm going to give you a hint, okay? A hint. This is not mentioned in the slides, but uh, I'm going to show it to you, and uh, hopefully, okay, uh, this is going to help you do the exercises in an easier way. So let's take the first one, okay? The first one is Catherine is very friendly. That's the first sentence. The second sentence is, she lives next door to us. Okay, so you have to identify that the two sentences have one element in common. And that element in common is that they both mention the same person. We're talking about Catherine. And after that, in the second sentence, you have she. Both Catherine and the word she refer to the same person. That's the element in common in both sentences. Therefore, the relative clause should come after one of these elements. And then you say, Catherine, comma, who lives next door to us, comma, is very friendly. So where do you place the relative clause? after one of those elements in common. Now, we stayed at the Park Hotel. A friend of ours recommended this hotel. So Park Hotel, this hotel, okay? We stayed at the Park Hotel, comma, which a friend of ours recommended. Rufino. I don't sure, but, but I, I, I am in two answers. In two answers. You want to answer? Sure? Okay, uh, no problem. Only one way you, to find out. You help me. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Of course, of course. Uh, we we drove through the airport. Who a uh, comma whose the airport was not far from the city, or oh. uh -huh. uh, we drove that that the airport where where the airport was not far from the city. Okay. Um, but, let's take a look. Right, we have. 
we're going to use the same uh, logic here. We drove to the airport, okay? And then the airport was not far from the city. Going to zoom out a little bit. Okay, we have two sentences. Sentence number one is we drove to the airport. Sentence number two, the airport was not far from the city. What is the element in common in both sentences? Who can help me? What element? The appears? airport. The airport, yeah. So we drove to the airport and also the airport appears in the second sentence. So that means that you are going to use a relative clause, but you don't have to include the airport in it because it will be redundant. Okay. So we have, we drove to the airport, comma, and then you have the airport was not far from the city. So instead of saying the airport again, you will have to use a relative pronoun. And what is that? We're talking about a Who? thing. Sorry? Who? Whose? Mm, not exactly, no, it's not whose. Where? You can use where, but normally you use where when you're talking about a place where you do something. Okay, in this case, it would be which. It will be which, okay, because we're talking about a place in which you are not doing something. So we drove to the airport, which, okay, uh huh, which what? Was, was not far from the city. That's correct. That's correct. Now, you may be wondering, okay, so when are we going to use which and where, okay? You use where when you are doing something in that place, okay? For example, imagine um, uh, uh, you're talking to an old girlfriend and you say, hey, uh, that is the bench, es la banca, right? We kissed. Uh, we first kissed uh, on that bench. Okay, imagine you're talking to an old girlfriend or an old boyfriend, I don't know. So that is the bench we kissed on that, uh, on that bench. Now, you did something on that bench. You kissed, okay? It's an action that you did there, okay? So in that case, you can use where. So you say, that is the bench where we first kissed. Simple, okay? That's the idea. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, we drove to the airport, which was not far from the city. Okay, number three, Kate's husband is an airline pilot. I have never met Kate's husband. Biden. Kate's husband, who I <clears throat> who never met, is who? an okay. airline airport. Uh, pilot. Okay. okay, an airline pilot. So, pilot. can you can you repeat it, uh, Byron, please? Okay, Kate's husband. Okay, okay. Kate's husband, who never met, is Wait, an uh, airline okay. pilot. Okay, excellent. But you're missing one small element: the subject of the relative uh -huh. clause. Who? Who me I I met uh, who I never met who I have never met okay so you okay. say Kate's husband who I have never met is an airline pilot el esposo de Kate a quien no conozco o nunca he conocido verdad es piloto okay so piloto. Kate's husband who I have never met is an who airline I pilot. have never met mm -hmm. who I have never met okay okay that's Thanks, right. Teacher. You're welcome. Thank you for participating. Very good. Great. Now, again, it's a non-defining relative clause because if you eliminate it, the sentence still makes sense. And you say, Kate's husband is an airline pilot. Okay. People will get the idea. Okay, number five, the stores open in the evening. There are most tourists. Uh, I think there's a mistake here. Okay. Most tourists should be plural. So the stores open in the evening. There are most tourists in the evening. What are the two elements in common? Okay, Rufino. I try again. Okay, uh, let's give it a try. Um, the stores open in the evening. 
uh, uh, where where there are most tourists okay uh we're talking about the evening the evening is not a place it's a time so you have to use when when okay can you say it again please the store the store is open in the evening uh when when there there are most tourists that is in the evening no correct okay the stores open in the evening when there are most tourists good very good thank you rufino thank you. great all right that is great number six lisa is away from home a lot Lisa's job involves a lot of traveling. Now, this one is a bit more difficult. Who wants to try? Biden. Okay. Lisa, who jobs involves a lot of traveling, is away from home a lot. Lisa, whose job involves a lot of traveling, is away from home a lot. That's correct. Okay. Whose job? Okay. Who you trabajo, right? Whose job? Okay. Very whose good. Whose job? Exactly. Thank you, Byron. That is correct. Lisa, whose job involves a lot of traveling, is away from home a lot. Thank you. That is great. Okay. Um, I insist. Okay. Everybody participate. It's always the same people, right? I'm seeing the same people participating. I can count them with the, with the fingers on one hand. Okay. So please um, try, give it a try. Okay. If you get the wrong answer, don't worry. Okay. You're going, we're going to learn together and I'm going to guide you so you can get to the answer, but don't be afraid of participating. Okay. Just give it a try. Give it a try. Number seven, we enjoyed our visit to the museum. We saw a lot of interesting things in the museum. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed our visit to the museum. We saw a lot of interesting things in the museum. Elizabeth. I tried. Okay, great. Okay. We enjoyed our visit to the museum where we saw a lot of, a lot of interesting things. Voila. Now that's not English, that's French. Yeah, we enjoyed our visit to the museum where we saw a lot of interesting things. Perfect. Very good. You see, this is what I'm talking about. I know you have the answers in your heads. Okay, just, just participate. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was very good. Okay, uh, number eight. Paul and Sandra have a daughter, Amanda. Amanda has just started school. How about this one? This one's a bit easier, I believe. Rufino. Okay, and try again. Mm -hmm. Paul and Paul and Sandra have a daughter. Um Amanda. Mm -hmm. uh, who who has who has just started school. Correct. Okay, yeah. Paul and Sandra have a daughter, Amanda, who has just started school. Great. Okay, everybody, uh, thank you very much. Okay, that's that was very, very good. Okay. Um, all right. Now we're going to do a second exercise right here, okay? But this one is going to be a bit more difficult because it involves defining and non-defining relative clauses, okay? We're going to step up uh, the difficulty level a little bit. So read the information and complete the sentences. Use a defining or 
a non-defining relative clause each time. Remember to use commas in sentences containing the non-defining relative clauses, okay? So example, my brother is an architect. He lives in Hong Kong. So when you say he lives in Hong Kong, okay, well, that sounds like complementary information, like extra information, not necessary for you to understand that he is an architect. So it must be non-defining. So my brother, comma, who lives in Hong Kong, Hey, wait a, wait a second. I got the wrong answer right here. He's very funny. No, he's an architect. I apologize. It was late at night when I was doing this. Okay, I was sleepy. So again, so my brother, comma, who lives in Hong Kong, comma, is an architect. It's embarrassing when this happens. Again, I apologize. Number two, the strike, la huelga, okay, the strike at the factory has ended. Okay, the strike began 10 days ago. So what can you say right here? If you need to use commas, you will have to specify it. So give it a try. Defining and non-defining relative clauses now. Who wants to try? No, no tengan miedo de participar. Participemos. Rufina Milcar. Uh, the strike at at the factory um, that that began ten days ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else? Uh, the um, is the strike at the factory mm -hmm. um, that that began ten days ago. Mm -hmm. Is correct or not correct? <laughs> Two words are missing. You need to finish the sentence. Okay. Um, anything? Um, anybody helping me? Okay. All right. So, um, Rufina has the idea right there. Who can help him finish it? Let's try. Okay. Gabriel. Uh, the strike at the factory, which began 10 days ago, has ended. Has ended. Okay, that's correct. Uh, is that a defining or a non-defining relative clause? It's um, non-defining. Non-defining. Therefore, you need commas, right? Yes, that's right. That is correct. The strike at the factory, comma, which began 10 days ago, comma, has ended. So uh, Rufino uh, was close to the answer right there, but there were two little problems. Problem number one is that it was uh, incomplete. You need it has ended. And problem number two was that uh, it was non-defining. Therefore, you can't use that. You cannot say the strike at the factory that began 10 days ago has ended. That would have been incorrect. You can only use which because it's non-defining. Okay, thank you, uh, Rufino okay. and Gabriel. Thank you. What about uh, number three? I was looking for a book this morning. I have found it now. So how about this one? Let's try. Don't be afraid to try. Nobody wants to try? No? Come on, this is a this is a good opportunity you have to practice this. Take a look. It 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 reads, I was looking for a book this morning and then I have found it now. I have found the book. So I have found what did you find?
Okay, then nobody wants to participate. I'll give you the answer. I have found the book that or which I was looking for this morning. Define a relative plus because it's telling you which book it is that I have found. I have found the book which I was looking for this morning or I have found the book that I was looking for this morning. What about number four? My car has never broken down. I have had this car for 15 years. How about this one right here? My car has never broken down. I have had this car for 15 years. Wendy, thank you. Uh, teacher, I don't know if if it's correct, but Only I one guess. way to find out. Okay, my car. I don't know if I can use who or whose whose has mm, fifteen you, years. The thing is, you're talking about a car, mm. so you cannot use who. Oh, which or that? Which? Uh huh. My car, which had 15 years, has never broken down. Okay, very close. Okay, so my car, which I have had for 15 years, mm. has never <laughs> broken, that, broken down. So my okay. car, comma, which I've had for 15 years, comma, has never broken down. So when you say, which I've had for 15 years, it's extra information. You don't need it to understand the whole sentence. Therefore, you have a non-defined in relative clause. Thank you, Wendy. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for participating. Number five, a lot of people applied for the job. Few of them had the necessary qualifications. They were not qualified for the job. So few of them had the necessary qualifications. What about number five? Who wants to try? Gabriel. I guess it's few of them that apply for the job had the necessary qualification. You can say a few of them. However, because this is the first time you mention uh, those people in the sentence, it's best for you not to use a pronoun, but the whole thing. So few. a few of the people, right? Okay. Yeah. Can you repeat the sentence this time with a few yeah. of the people? Few of the people that apply for the job had the necessary qualifications. Thank you. Defining or non-defining? Uh, defining. That's correct. A, f a few of the people who or that applied for the job had the necessary qualifications. Thank you, Gabriel. That is correct. Very good. Number six, Amy showed me a picture of her son. Her son is a police officer. So what do you have? Mm -hmm. Amy showed me a picture of her son. Her son is a police officer. Madeline. I will try. Um, so I guess Amy showed me who her son is a police officer. I'm sorry, okay. I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay. So you have Amy showed me. What did she show me? Amy showed me. Who? Mm -mm. Take take a look. When you say Amy showed me what? Let's take a look at the sentences again. Amy showed me a picture of her son. Her son is a police officer. So Amy showed me what? A picture. 
Uh -huh. A picture of? Wish. Of okay. son. Uh -huh. Amy showed me a picture of her son. Uh -huh. And then? Who is a police officer? Amy showed me a picture of her son who is a police officer. Okay, there you go. So again, uh, how do you do this? You need to I identify- have, I have the... a question. Uh, sure, Rufino. Um, I'm not sure if the expression her son is this uh, his son? No, because, uh, no. because this is a, um, what is that? Possessive adjective. It's a possessive adjective. Possessive adjectives don't depend on the mm -hmm. noun that follows. They depend on who they belong to. For example, I can say, uh, Ma let's say Mario's son, that will be his son, because he's the son of a man. If I say Sandra's okay. son, then I say her son, because he's the son of a lady. And if I say okay. Mario and Sandra's son, that will be their son, because he's the son of two people. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's how possessive adjectives work. Okay. They don't depend on the noun that follows them. No, they depend on who this noun is directly related to. In this case, again, if I say Mario's son, his son, because it's the son of a man. Sandra's son is her son, because it's the son of a lady. Mary and Sandra's son is their son, because it's the son of two people, right? A man and a woman. And Thank you, understood. Okay. All right, so um, again, uh, let's take a look at the last one. You have Amy showed me a picture of her son. And then the second sentence is, her son is a police officer. So you have to identify the element in common in both sentences. Amy showed me a picture of her son, and then her son is a police officer. What's the element in common? Her son. It appears in the first sentence, and it appears in the second sentence. So this is what you need to replace. So you say, Amy showed me a picture of her son, comma, and you have the first element right here. So the relative clause should come after that element. Who is a police officer? So that's a key right there, okay? All right, uh, we're gonna go now over the exercises in the platform. I did promise this, <laughs> okay, so um, knowledge check. I believe uh, you were asking about uh, knowledge check exercise 3.2, right? So let's take a look at this. Underline the relative clauses in the sentences and add commas where necessary, write D for a, non for a defining and ND for non-defining relative uh, clause. So the first one is Bangkok, comma, which is the capital of Thailand, comma, has many excellent restaurants and markets. So the relative clause is which is the capital of Thailand. And it's a non-defining relative clause because it is a non-defining relative clause because it gives you extra information about Bangkok. You will have to use commas, okay? What about number two? Hong Kong was a British colony until 1997 when it was returned to China. What is the relative clause in sentence number two? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Gabriel. And then Biden. On this sentence, the relative clause is when it was returned to China. So it has a comma before when. And yeah. That would be a non. Non-defining. Not defining, yes. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Hong Kong was a British colony until 1997, comma, when it was returned to China. Okay, thank you. Biden, number three. Busan is a PC port city that is located in South Korea. What is the relative clause here? Is that it's located in South Korea? That is correct. Is it defining or non-defining? It's defining. 
I it is think. defining. Yeah, it is defining because if I just say oh, okay. Busan is a busy port city, that sounds like, okay, kind of incomplete. So yeah. that is located in South Korea. Ah, okay. It's defining, totally. Thank you. Okay, number three. Bogota, which is situated in a high plateau in central Colombia, has frequently changing weather. So uh, what about this one? Uh, Gabriel, I don't know if you want to participate or, or if your end just uh, is up. I don't know. <laughs> no, I just want to say that in the okay. platform, ah, uh, okay. it has, if we put the sentence like that, uh, it shows, it, it incorrect. marks us wrong, incorrect, yes. We okay. have to put a comma before that, I guess. Bef uh, which one? Number three. Number three, yes. But if you notice, there is a mistake right there. There will be a mistake because you have the relative pronoun that. And you can only use that in defining relative clauses. Defining relative clauses don't need commas. So that will be a mistake in the platform. But OK, um, let's take a look at it. Just let me load it. Okay, uh, should be 3.2. Let me check. Uh-huh, that is true. Okay, the answer that is uh, in the platform for number three goes like this. So if, if, if it doesn't work, then try using a comma. The answer should go like this. Busan is a busy port city comma that is located in South Korea. Gabriel is right, okay. Um, in the platform, you will have to use a comma. However, I need to repeat this. This is not exactly correct, okay? Because this is a, a, a defining relative clause. If you use that, you can only use that in defining relative clauses. If you need a comma, then you will have to say which, okay? And it doesn't really make sense if you think about it. Uh, we have a chat entry here. Well, two chat entries. Uh -huh. Busan is a busy port city, comma, that is located in South Korea. Again, that's the answer that you need to enter in the platform, but you need to know that it is not grammatically correct. Okay, so just for you to know. Okay, so again, why is not correct? Because you can only use that in defining relative clauses. So no comma should be necessary. Number four, Bogota, which is situated in a high plateau in, in central Colombia, has frequently changing weather. How about this one? Uh, Carlos. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. I think I think some notifying. Okay. Notifying? Number four. Yes, Number not defined. Ah, it's uh, non-defining. Oh. Yeah, correct. It's non-defining. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I misunderstood what you were saying. It's non-defining, <laughs> correct. And 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 what is the relative clause here? Sorry? What is what is the relative clause in the sentence? Oh, okay. What do you need to underline? Bogota which is situ, 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 situated, situated situated on a high planet plan, Pla plateau. Plan, plateau in central Colombia has, okay. fre has, has frequently changing change, weather. Changing weather. Okay, but that's the complete sentence. <laughs> In the complete sentence, what is the relative clause? The relative clause always begins with which, uh, that, who, when, uh, where. Uh -huh. Has frequency. Uh, not exactly. It's a bit uh, different. I don't know, teacher. Okay, no problem. The relative clause is which is situated on a high plateau in central Colombia. The plateau is una meseta, okay? So which is situated on a high plateau in central Colombia has frequently changing weather. Now, um, what Juan, Car Juan Carlos told us, sorry, Carlos, I'm sorry, I said Juan Carlos. I'm sorry, yes, Carlos. what Carlos, Carlos only, I'm sorry. What Carlos told us is that non-defining relative clause, that is correct, okay? Yeah, it's non-defining because it's only, when you say, which is situated on a high plateau in central Colombia, that is extra information, okay? So it's non-defining, 
Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What very about sure. ah? By the way, this one also uh, you have to be careful because let me guess, <laughs> it takes it as incorrect in the platform. platform. Yes. yes. Okay. Number I'm going to tell you why. Five. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why. Again, another little mistake in the platform. This is why. Because in the answer was registered without a space between the comma and which. So if you are entering like this, it will take it as incorrect. Eliminate this space right here. Eliminate that, and it will be taken as correct. Try that. You will see I'm right. <laughs> yeah, sometimes this happens. Okay, but that's why we're here. Okay, to uh, to see all these cases. Okay, if you eliminate that space between the first comma and the word which, okay, it should be taken as correct. ¿Qué estas cosas suceden cuando digamos está eh, eh, programando las respuestas si alguien le pone un espacio más, un espacio menos a la respuesta? Ya si usted lo pone diferente por una pequeña, pequeña, pequeña diferencia, ya se lo toma malo. Si esto fuera un examen escrito, yo lo tomaría correcto, por supuesto, ¿verdad? porque es algo insignificante. Ok, pero como es automático, entonces ya lo toma equivocado. Uh, enough Spanish, sorry. Ok, uh, number five. Montreal is a sophisticated city where some of the best cuisine in Canada is found. How about this one? How about this one right here? So Montreal is a sophisticated city where some of the best cuisine in Canada is found. Okay, Gabriel. On um, this case, it's going to be where some of the best cuisines in Canada is found. That's that right. Non-defining. Non -defining. Yes. So, so we need commas. And uh, before where? Actually, it's defining. Okay. If you uh, say Montreal is a sophisticated city, it, it kind of gives you uh, a complete meaning, but at the same time, it's like there are many, many, many uh, sophisticated cities around the world. Okay, so if you want to complete that idea, it goes more like Montreal is a sophisticated city where most of the best cuisine in Canada is found. Okay, however, okay, and that's another thing in the platform, okay, you will have to use a comma right there. So... If you answer that in the platform, please use a comma, okay? Because in the platform is taken as non-defining for some reason. Okay, so please do that, okay? Use a comma right there. And the last one, Sao Paulo, which is the biggest city in Brazil, is also one of the world's most populated cities. Rufino. Oh, non-defined? It's non-defining. Okay, that is correct. And what is the relative clause? Which in the biggest city in Brazil? That's right. Okay, which is the biggest city in Brazil is a relative clause, and it is a non-defining relative clause. Therefore, you need to use commas to separate them from the main clause. Very good. Okay, that is very, very good. So those are the answers. Now, uh, in the platform, you have this. You know the answers now, but remember that uh, you have to pay uh, close attention to these three, okay? Um, I'm going to go back to, okay, this. Uh, Gabriela. Well, teacher, I wrote the answer uh, right, like you have it right there. Mm -hmm. in Still the wrong? Board. Yes, not allow me to. Hmm. to I guess it's because of Bogota. You have to use the the A with the tip, with the accent. The A without it or with. I am lost right here. Ah, Bogota. Yes. Uh, try it without the accent. Okay. Although apparently in the platform you can use it. Let me check. I'm going to try 
let's see. Number five, too, teacher. Number five. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, let me check. Let's try. I I'm sorry, this thing is like super slow. So sometimes it is super slow. Okay, 3.2. All right, let's try to do this together. So which ones are the people with that? Mm -hmm. It's because some of the best, it says some for the best. Ah, yeah, Number that's five. one. <laughs> okay, that you're, that's quite observant. Okay, so um, let's see. Yeah, that's right. Okay, try this. Okay, uh, it says some for the best. It should be some of the best. But because the answer also appears like that, and instead of using of, use F O. Okay, just just uh, change the order of the of the of the uh, uh, letters right there. Let's try. So you have ah, Montreal. Right. Thank you. Uh huh. Yeah, is a sophisticated city, comma, where some instead of of uh, try. Oh, and again, I'm sorry, right? I didn't program this. <laughs> the best cuisine in Canada is found. Okay, let's try. Correct, okay. The rest are incorrect because I didn't answer. And the other one was number four, Bogota, which is situated in the high plateau in central Colombia, has frequently changing weather. So let's try Bogota. Okay, with an accent, comma, and as I said before, try not to, uh, don't don't use the space here because it will take us it will be taken as wrong, which is situated on a high plateau in central Colombia. Also use capital C for Colombia, comma has frequently changing weather. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it works. It works. So if you don't have it right, check everything. Maybe some sometimes it is a very small mistake, like not using the final period, or sometimes it's a double space that, that you accidentally entered, or sometimes there's like a very, very small mistake, a letter that is different that is preventing you from getting the right answer. So, was the uh, space a space? Uh, uh huh. The comma. Okay, good. All right. Uh, I'm just gonna call attendance because it's time for us to continue or to go actually. <laughs> so, um, if you hear your name, please let me know. Is Elizabeth del Carmen Mejia Torres? Are you here? Yes, teacher. Present. Welcome, <laughs> Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. I'm here, teacher. Okay, thank you. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. I'm here. Thank you. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Not here. Okay, all right. Everybody, thank you. We'll continue tomorrow and uh, we'll do a few more exercises. We're going to try to uh, uh, cover more content from section number three. Um, as usual, thank you very much. Thanks for your participation and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Take good care. Thank good you, night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.